this is Taz from Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One, here to empower and inspire your wig journey. Today we're going to take a look at a brand new style by Gabor for winter 2022. This wig style was sent to me by Wig Studio One for this review today, so you can check it out before you make the investment. We invite you to shop at Wig Studio One. All of the links will be below this video. If you expand the description box, you'll see a link directly to the style. You can check out all the colors and pricing. If you have any questions for us, please reach out to support at wigstudioone.com. Sweet Escape is one of three brand new styles released by Gabor January 2022. It's supposed to be a short, really heavily layered bob style. It looks really easy to wear, so I'm super excited about that. Now, this is a little bit of a different packaging look for Gabor, and I don't know if it's just exclusive to their luxury collection or if they're going to be using this box for all of their styles, um, but I'm used to seeing that telltale kind of yellow box. I rather like this one. Now, this luxury collection and all of their uh, collections are made from the uh, mode acrylic fiber, which is a non-heat friendly synthetic. So here we are. Here's a first look at this. Now the color is GL61388, shaded champagne. So we're gonna take a look at the color in great detail here coming up. But first I wanna get this unboxed. I wanna show you a look at the cap because this is a part of the luxury collection, which is always a little step up. They kind of level up on that collection in terms of cap features. So we're gonna take a look. Okay, here's the hang tag. Let me do a quick, just a quick inspection here. Okay, everything looks good, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tags. It makes no sense to have the tags on during a review when they're just very bothersome and they have no purpose. So the first thing is just a gut reaction. I just go ahead and shake, shake, shake and pull the fiber away from the cap just in the process of waking all of that up. Okay. And I'll work on this a little bit more, um, but I do wanna show you the inside of the cap before I apply. Okay. I think I was thinking that the luxury would be a completely hand-tied cap, Obviously that's not the case here for this piece, um, but I do love, right away, love the extended lace front. So you're gonna see that stretch all the way back through the ear tabs on either side. It's nicely contoured and it looks finely knotted there. And then right away on the top, you can see some open wefting and then there's about a quarter size, maybe just a dime size piece of monofilament um, right at the crown. Now that is on the hind crown and on the left. I was trying, you know, be getting my orientation here with the camera and everything where that's situated. So it's not directly in the middle, it's a little bit to the left back there. So we've got a nice velvet ear tab, lots of fiber spliced in there. Those ear tabs are look very nice, nice sturdy stays. We have a standard felted nape with Velcro style adjusters, lots of wefting and darting for custom fit. I'm really curious about the fit on this because from my recent experience, and, and by recent, I mean the last three years or so, Gabor has run very large on me, maybe the last four or five. Um, so I'll be curious about the fit on this. I wish they would get a little bit back to average. That way it encompasses more people um, and then make a large or a petite accordingly. But that average size I think is really important. Okay, so, um, there's really no designated parting space here in terms of monofilament. So I'm just gonna pick and fluff 
just again to wake up that fiber. People always ask me, uh, Taz, you know, I saw a review of it and it didn't look didn't look that fluffy or that wispy or whatnot. And, you know, what are you doing? And that's all I do. I pick and I shake it out really well. I pick and I fluff. I bring air into the layers. I think that really gives a lot of natural movement to the fiber. And from a personal, on a personal note, I absolutely cannot stand a wig that is smashed to the head. <laughs> so that's just my personal preference. And that's the beauty of wigs is that we can wear them according to how we want to wear them, what makes us look good and feel good. So I'm not going to make any adjustments here. I'm going to go ahead and apply, and then I will talk to you a little bit about the fit as I see it. Okay. So without making any adjustments here, this thing is just rolling all over my head. So I know that it runs on the large side. Now it feels a little bit large in terms of circumference, but I also didn't notice any baggy cap. So maybe it's more average from ear to ear and front to back while having a larger circumference. So I'm gonna go ahead and make adjustment and then I'll talk to you about, again, about it again once I have it on. Okay. I cinched it in just about as far as it could go there. And you know what? It feels really good. Um, maybe just a little bit of bagginess there at the crown area. Not terrible. So I still feel like it is large on me. I have a 21 and a quarter inch circumference and it's large on me. Maybe a little bit of box hair right there on top. And all I do is get in there and I just continue to work the root to set the motion free there. Okay, so I still sense that it's a bit large. Let me see what I can do. All right, I've got it cinched in as far as I can go. Maybe I'll just uh, crisscross them a bit, but that's a little hard to do when you're working with a standard nape because there's just not enough real estate back there on that nape to make the adjustments. See what I've done here? I've sort of crisscrossed them right above the tag, right below the tags. Okay, giving it a try. I'm sure it'll be fine. And that's where that little bit of monofilament is there. And the fibers are matted down to that really intensely. So I just need to, again, just swirl around and wake that up because I don't want a pointy look at the crown. That doesn't look very natural, does it? Okay. Well, this is this gives you an idea. I think we're fleshing out that style fairly well. And some of this is going to be box here because it's folded like a taco inside of that box, which leaves a little bit of hump hair at the, at the top there. Okay, so this is what we've got here for Sweet Escape. And I, it is remarkably easy to wear. I can tell right away. I continue to pick at this just because I sense that box hair right there um, and it bothers me a little bit. But let's move on. I want to talk with you about this color. So I want to get into this color, this GL61388 SS Shaded Champagne Blonde. Okay, so these are the soft shades by Gabor. Typically what that means is that there's a softer, longer transition from the root out to the tips of the hair of the color. Now this is going to be a combination of some medium to dark gold blonde. There'll be some light gold blonde in there. And then what I see to my eye is just kind of a, a platinum shade, like a baby platinum, a neutral platinum in there. And then all of that on a root. Now discussing this root, it looks very golden and brassy to me. Okay, and I, I think that anybody who has experience with the Soft Shades Blondes, like GL1422, the, um, 
the GL uh, 23101 Sunkiss beige in this color, the root does take on a bit of this brassiness that, that you're noticing here. And we'll take a look at it in natural light too. Okay, so overall a really cute style. I love how it frames the face. Let's get into these specs real quick. The description says that these bang pieces are about six and a half inches. Um, definitely not six and a half inches. <laughs> All right, so I am six and a half inches from the hairline to chin, and those don't even go really too much past my cheekbone. I'm thinking five inches at the most. Now, if you come down a little further right there in the, where the side pieces kind of swoop down, maybe that's where they're getting that. We do have about a five inch bang, um, maybe six to six and a half inches here on the sides supposed to have a six inch crown. Again, I'm not seeing that at all here. Um, that's probably four to four and a half inches. It tapers down into a two and a half inch nape. And it really does hold flush to the nape. It's, it's pretty nice back there. And then all in all, you've got just a little bit of a, of a nice tapered uh, beveled effect in the back. There is a little bit of height at the crown, as you notice. Um, we've got that lace front and a little bit of a dime-sized piece of monofilament there on the left crown. And uh, this weighs just about two and a half ounces. It feels like it weighs two and a half ounces. It feels really lightweight. And again, where that monofilament is situated, I've got some box hair around that, so just keep that in mind. But let's do get up close on this lace front. Okay, I love the fact that it's extended. That definitely is a luxury feature here. Well, well done there. That's my own widow's peak. Um, nice fine knotting there. This one isn't too heavy on permatease, but that permatease I sense starts right away behind that, right where that lace front lets off. So you may be able to get some lift if you work it. Because I like showing off a Gabor lace front. And when you do like an up and over kind of style, it, it changes the profile of the wig a little bit. You see what I mean? So if I bring this up off of the face and create a little bit of lift there, that that's my preference. Um, but as you seen right out of the box, you don't have to do this. It, it can lay flat right against the forehead and look completely fine. I just like that little up and over there and so for me I'll just continue to work that. Now if I were going out right now a brand new wig and I wanted to keep this up and over I'd probably have to use some sort of product to hold it into place but for now what I would just do is just continue to train it um, with the heat from my hands. Some twists, some heat, and repetition is all it really takes sometimes to, to train to train a style in that way. Okay, um, some permities obviously right there on the top, not too thick, heavy and pillowy. And some at the back, virtually none at the nape, very little at the temple. So I, I still feel like it's a sculpted look. Um, it's not too big, okay? So you can definitely get a slimmer profile on this style if that is your preference. I will say that these fibers are the Flex Light fiber. It's not acrylic fiber, 100% uh, regular synthetic, not heat friendly. Each one of these fibers is super baby fine and silky feeling, feathery feeling, but there's no body at all, okay? So you're not getting any body. So if I get in here and start fluffing, all you're gonna see is the, the fibers just fall right back down.
So it's been about two days since I performed this unboxing and review for Sweet Escape by Gabor. I shared with you in that review that there was some box hair going on with this style. There were some uh, little odd bent areas right on the top there. And I knew that I had to get to get water on it immediately and allow it to dry and start to work on that box hair. Sometimes that's just enough to spring it back to life. So I did just that. And this morning, I, um, I just swirled around when it was completely dry, swirled around at the base there just to bring it bring it all to life and hopefully the box hair has resolved. I know it has definitely improved. Um, the other things that I have done here is I continued to work this away from the face because like you like like I said and like you know, I do like an up and over kind of a styling effect here. Um, now while I was doing that, I also noticed that this lace front is a bit thick and scratchy compared to uh, the legacy Gabor styles. Um, Gabor has always impressed me with their butter-like lace fronts. This one is not like that. This one is a little more thick, a little more scratchy. Now, the knots are still fine, and it's still a very nice looking lace front, but I do notice a little bit of difference in that monofilament lace material that they are using. So I cannot say uh, whether, you know, maybe they had to change factories, manufacturers. A lot of these manufacturers have had to pivot in this environment of supply chain issues and lockdowns in Southeast Asia where a lot of these wigs are made. So it's really hard to tell. And it's, it's also not possible for me to know if this is some of the issues that are present on the other sweet escape styles as well. I just thought I would point this out to you because it did escape me uh, on the unboxing and application during the review. Glasses do seem to fit very nicely between the ear and the ear tab. So like many styles like this, I feel like this is a really glasses friendly style if you're a full time glasses wearer. So I think I'm just gonna manipulate these layers a little bit, toss my head just to give you an idea of the density, the movement, the fiber, and maybe inspire you to style your short little layered wig styles. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you soon on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. I have not talked about my square bands in a while. Everybody knows that this is my very favorite wig accessory. I try to feature them in every single wig review styling segment. Um, the square band is a hinged hair band and it features little rubberized teeth there. This is the most comfortable headband that you will ever wear, whether you have natural hair or a wig. And those little rubberized teeth just hold the hair in place gently. Um, I could literally go out and do cartwheels. This thing isn't going anywhere yet. It's super comfortable. I don't, I don't even know it's on. So then you also have these, uh, these arms that have a rubberized material at the bottom. This helps keep the arms in place as well. So they're very secure. Um, and the fact that they're hinged just gives you more of a custom-like fit. So if you have a little bit of a larger head, of course, there's a little bit of give there. Um, likewise, though, if you have more petite measurements, it, you do get a little bit of a grippy feeling, which always gives you a nice sense of security. These come in so many colors. Um, I, I can't even begin to guess how many colors. <laughs> Prints, solids. Um, you get a variety of little bling here. We've got some crystals and rhinestones. This is five rows of clear crystal rhinestones there, or you could get them without rhinestones. Be sure to visit www.squarebands.com. Uh, the promo code for me is TAZ. It's 25% off while that promotion lasts. So I will attach all of the links below. But on a little bob style like this, especially for summer, um, this is perfect. I just couldn't go without these square bands. 
You can come in from the top. Gives a little bit of decoration to your style. Likewise, if you want to hold the hair back and show off that lace front or just simply keeping the hair out of your eyes to do task work like apply makeup, just work with it until it's cute because it's not going anywhere. Hands down, the most wig-friendly accessory on the market and functional. <laughs> 